today's discussion is all about PPP, that is point to point protocol. Now, the topics to be discussed in this particular the overview of today's discussion is we'll talk about serial communication, we'll talk about uh, TDM, time division multiplexing, we'll talk about when, we'll talk about DT and DT, DC, we'll talk about a little bit about HDLC encapsulation, then uh, we'll be talking about encapsulation with HDLC and encapsulation with the uh, PPP, identify the advantage of PPP, then some commands will show since we have uh, taken packet tracer, a small topology connecting three routers. Then uh, we will come back, uh, uh, we will uh, again talk about how this LCP and NCP works. Then uh, we will talk about PPP frame, PPP session. Then we will discuss PPP uh, the mechanism, PAP and CHAP, PPP authentication process. Now to start about uh, serial communication, so this is uh, when technology now. This is R1, router 1 and router 2. So, whenever two uh, devices are connected, so this is uh, we, we call it as WAN communication. Now, when we talk about WAN, when for example, this is router 1 and this is router 2, when they communicate with each other, we use serial communication. So, there is a serial port 000, and for example, 000. So, one will work as DCE and another one will work as a DTE. The one where the connection is okay, start the connecting terminal is called DCE, and the one where the connection termin terminates is called uh, DTE or about. Now, let's uh, discuss about uh, DTE and DCE in more details. So, this is what serial communication. Now, this is my normal frame, HDLC frame coming through the physical transmission. So, in serial communication, we have these are the standards RS-232, V.35 and high speed serial interface. So basically, this is the standard used in WAN. So, when we find optical fiber communication, electrical signal and also uh, the serial communication plays a huge role because this is little, uh, you know, lower side the communication. but uh, this actually uh, this transmission system defines that how much how much number of frames will be transmitted over the physical medium so we have discussed about hdlc hdlc frame formats so now whenever this in serial communication whenever they actually send the signal it uses the mechanism tdm time division multiplexing so what multiplexing is for example this is my serial communication so and there are R1, R2 and R3. So, there is a multiplexer who actually combine these symbols. Now, for example, channel 1, channel 2 and channel 3 are multiplexed. So, this will carry all the signals from channel 1, channel 2 and channel 3. Now, when it will demultiplex, so this is called multiplexer and this is called demultiplexer. Now, when it is demultiplexing the channel 1 corresponding channel 1, channel 2 and channel 3, signals will be isolated by this demultiplexer. So, this is the role of multiplexer and demultiplexer. So, in serial communication, uh, in specifically in WAN, we have this kind of connection of this kind of communication. Now, uh, we will be uh, discussing how to configure WAN, WAN configuration will do. So, we will be configuring, we will be configuring both R1 and R2. So, little connection required here. So, we will be configuring R1 and we will be configuring R2. So, let us see what we configure. Before that, uh, let us understand the time division multiplexing in the entire time frame. The whole time frame is divided into time segments. So, um, how much data it can carry, it will multiplex together and it will take. So, what uh, in TDM, we have seen that BRI and we will also discuss this later how PRI and uh, this PRI actually works in ISDN. So, in that case, we can show that, see that uh, this uh, nine slots are there, time slots. Now, this time slots will be repeated and this how it actually do the time division multiplex. Now, whenever we have WAN connection, we have uh, 
CSU, DSU. Now DT and DC um, basically have some demarcation points. Now what is CSU, DSU is basically channel service unit and data service unit. Uh, where that uh, connection terminates is basically DT. So for example, there are some connection coming to this particular router from ISP. Now this ISP is CSU, DSU. Okay, this actually plays a role of DC and this plays a role of DT. Now, uh, we have a uh, you know, network terminating unit that is called NTU, that is a specification. Now this, uh, we can have uh, DC also as a network terminating unit. So we have different, different uh, standards. That's V.35 and RS232. When we come to frame delay and other things, we'll discuss in two details. So DT, DC we have discussed. So whenever we have serial communication, so one end there is DC, one end there is DC, DT. So if this end, if you dis decide that this will become DCE, this end it will become DTE. So how to find out whether it is DC or DT? So you need to write this command that for example show controllers serial 000. Now once you write this, it will show that whether it is DC or DT. So here it is saying that this is DCE and the clock rate is mentioned here. So basically you need to have a clock rate. If you go back to this particular device and go to the terminal and type show controllers serial 000, this will tell this is DTE. So there is no clock detected and this is DTE. So this is, this two interfaces are connecting connected with each other here in this case. So this is actually called telling this, this is DC and this is DTE. If you go and type show controller command, we will show it. Now coming back to the uh, slide, let's discuss more into DTE, DC and these interfaces are physical. These are the specification of DTE, DC. So this is how the cable looks like. Now HDLC and the absolution, we have discussed HDLC HDLC encapsulation before. Now different different link protocols were used in communication uses HDLC encapsulation. Uh, we will see frame relay and other things, but uh, other than uh, normal uh, serial link, where uh, this is a serial link where if you see uh, if you check the encapsulation, this uses the encapsulation standard, which is HDLC. So by default, uh, the standard is HDLC standard. Now. HDLC encapsulation supports LAPB, LAPD, LAPM, and LAPF. Now uh, we will. Uh, no, sorry, uh, HDLC encapsulation is basically a bit uh, bit oriented data link layer protocol. Now uh, we have some link access derived protocol LAPB, LAPD, LAPM, LAPF. We will discuss. So before that, we will discuss frame delay. That's PPP. Uh, sorry, before that. Uh, Frame delay, uh, ISD and all, we will discuss PPP. So we will discuss about uh, not LAPM in details. We will just discuss that how PPP works. So this is the encapsulation standards for HDLC. Now whenever we configure HDLC, we have to go and go to, we have to go to that serial interface. For example, here in this case, I am going to the serial interface. So how to go to serial interface? Basically config P interface serial 000. If you want to use HDLC, you will write encapsulation HDLC. So this is how the configuration of HDLC is. Now if I copy and paste it, see this is how HDLC encapsulation is. So in that particular interface, if I go and type HDLC, it will become HDLC. By default, it is always HDLC. Now, whenever you go and check that show interface command, so if you go and check the show interface command here, show interface serial 000, it will give you details. Now, this is telling this line protocol is up, and this will tell this is in encapsulation HDLC. So this will specify that whether the encapsulation is HDLC or not. So basically we have already shown you that uh, 
how to check that serial interface. Now, whenever we um, configure, we'll use such commands like debug serial interface, debug ARP, debug frame relay, and all those. Uh, so these three commands we'll use often: that debug PPP negotiation, debug PPP packet, debug PPP, and debug PPP authentication. When once we configure, you can debug and check that in router whether they're doing properly or not. Now, come coming back to PPP. Now, we we already are aware of the fact that in uh, lower layer we have something called physical layer, and in data link layer we have two two layer that is MAC and LLC. Now, whenever this is combining data link layer, so whenever we are doing some configuration in this lower layer, we will discuss about LLC and MAC in details. Now, these are the data link layer authentication, link control protocol and network control protocol works in data link layer, one in MAC and one is one in uh, LLC. Now, PPP contains two sub protocol, one is called LCP and one is called NCP. Now, in LLC, we find, find this NCP and so LCP is uh, NCP and uh, this link control protocol we find in MAC layer. So what NCP is, NCP is basically for establishing connection in point to point protocol, this negotiate and set up the control in WAN link. Now where in case of NCP, we, we can see that this takes care of the encapsulation part, whether it's PAP or SHAP and it will help NCP to establish the connection. So this is all about NCP and LCP. Now, what comes under it? LCP is authentication, completion, error detection, and uh, if it is having multi-link protocol, we call that as we, we call back. So, this uses this basic mechanism. Now, LCP handle this, handle various uh, varying limit on packet size, detect co uh, common misconfiguration error, and Establishing and terminating a new link. Now, PPP sessions, there are three phases in PPP sessions. One is link establishment, authentication, and network layer protocol phase. Now, in PPP session establishment, in LCP, first there is a link establishment. Then, if there is a, an authentication process, we need to configure that and to check that authentication through LCP. Then, the link quality is determined. And then network layer protocol configuration and all other corresponding thing will be handled by NCP. And finally, link is terminated by NCP. This is how PPP works. So this is what link establishment phase in case of PPP. Then there is an authentication phase by checking the authentication protocol. So and NCP actually takes care of different different protocol. It supports IPCP. Uh, for IPX, IPXCP and many other protocols for creating the connection with network layer because it basically need to identify whether it is in single network or different network depending on that it will this works. Now PPP authentication protocol we have two types of protocol one is called PAP one is called CHAP so basically this we will discuss in detail so PAP is called password authentication protocol this is called this is using it two-way handshaking method whereas CHAP is using three-way handshaking method for connection. Now let's configure PAP and let's see how PAP works. For example, these are the two different uh, two different routers, for example R1. So here in this case R1, we will be creating this router name is for example Santa Cruz. So there we will be creating a user of Santa Cruz. It is better that we can we, we should create a user in uh, we should create a user in the name of the router name. So now in two-way handshaking, PPP will send that username password across and like that they work. But in case of chat, what happens? The username password can be common. And this will automatically send by using MD5 encryption technique. So this remote node basically will use the hand hash function. When we hash hash function, so MD5 encryption is used. So encryption is basically 
used in chat so we can say that this is more secure so what happens in pair so there is a you know password uh, the password username password which will be shared across each other and they will finally say whether it is accept or reject but here in this case first one 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 uh, pt or dc will ch challenge another whether we are having a proper authentication or not it will respond that okay this is my password so there is a uh, okay so if a is challenging b b will reply back with its, with, with its password both as same password then if it is matching then it will accept the challenge and after accepting the challenge if it is okay then it will connection will be establishment or there will there is a immediate termination of the connection so chat is providing a better mechanism in case of authentication now this is my chat operation now this is what lcp establishment and negotiation in the link uh, the chat challenges so we will discuss this later so before that let's uh, going to con uh, let's go back and start doing the configuration so how to configure this router we will type these things first enable now config key we have to create the host name host name of this particular router for example r1 so now next step is okay go to the interface and say that encapsulation is pvp so here in this case we have to go to that particular interface and say that the interface encapsulation is pvp so there is a basic configuration so pvp is configuration will be made so now next let's uh, take take uh, the example of ip address let's use the ip address in this case uh, okay we will go back and give the ip address here in this case so the same thing need to be repeated for router if it is same thing will be repeated for router 2 so let's copy and paste it for router 2 whereas router 2 will be having ip address 1 so we can make it 1 and 2 like that so this is my basic configuration so we can try this in both the router first so let's go back and do it in both the router so router 1 you can go from CLI mode and paste this command and similarly we can go to router 2 and paste this command now it's also in CLI mode so this is my router 2 so router 1 and router 2 is configured with the basic configuration now coming back to now this is verifying uh, PPP uh, we'll do later because it will uh, well once we see we'll go and debug this initially uh, we can see that this process is open now uh, this is very much important now you have to create a username in case of pair now what what you have to do username of remote host so here in this case remote host will be r2 so let's take r2 and r2 here in this case and similarly we can create a user in the name of r1 and r1 so this is very easy Let's do it uh, again. User is created. Let's go back and so this is R2. Let's go back and do it in case of R2. So 
So now next is PPP PAP. This is very much required. Now PPP PAP send username. So we will send the username of R1. So let's go back and do it. Let's go back to serial interface and do it. So PPP PAP send username. The username it will send that is R1. Then it will send password R1. Now it's very easy to do it. Now what PPP is doing, PPP is sending R1 R1 here which is created here. So it will match with this and here in this case it will do the reverse process. It will send R2 and R2. Very easy to do it. Now you can go back and do the same in case of R2. Now let's go. Do it. So this is a basic configuration. So what I am doing in R1 is I am creating a host name that is R1. So I am creating password with the name of this one. So what R1 will do, R1 will send a username password that is R1 R1 which is created here. It is sending a username R2 R2 which is created here. It is going with a clear text. So it is very easy. Now. Sorry, we we power to do one more thing. There was PP2 authentication. PAP or chip that you need to mention. PPP authentication. This is here in this case. PAP. So we need to write that one. So this is a basic configuration. So whenever we are configuring PAP, we need to say that I am configuring PAP. So this is a when configuration. So R1 will be having this basic configuration and R2 will be having this basic configuration. So now we can check back, go and see that whether how they are uh, you know how they are reacting and how they are doing. So we, we, we can type show interface serial 000. zero, zero. Now go back and do it. Show interface serial 000. zero, zero. And check that. We will say that LCD open. And now if we want to ping, the ping will happen in between. Now we can actually see, see that if we are pinging, so I P I N T brief. So this is so I can ping ping one seventy two dot twenty five dot three dot two and success is hundred percent. Since it is pinging, we can say that they are connecting with each other. Now here in this case, whatever we have configured, it is nothing but my PAP. Uh, so PAP we have configured here. Okay. So we would like to configure chap over here. So let's see what basic mechanism of configuring chap. So pap and chap will configure. So now coming to chap. So we have configured pap. So here uh, it's very clear. So this is my Santa Cruz. So host name is Santa Cruz, but I am creating a username password for okay HQ. And here in this case, the username is uh, this is HQM, and I'm creating username in the name of Santa Cruz and Santa Santa Cruz. Now they they will exchange the information with each other. That is the basic PAP. So PAP establishing a link by okay sending a 
request uh, so pbp establish link they actually send the username password then it will give a positive or negative acknowledgement if it is matches then the establishment happens no configuring chat no configuring chat is easy because um, for example sunday cruise and hq if you are do the same thing will do but the password will be in the name of uh, uh, so the password will be in the uh, will be gone so here in this case okay, i can go and do it so i don't have to send it it's very easy to do it so this is chap this is chap so what i'll do i will connect with r1 and r3 so i will be using for example serial 001 serial 001 here in this case i'll give a password cisco and i'll be using on 16 16 so this i'll be doing it's very easy so i'll be creating username in reverse order so here in this case santa cruz i'm creating username in case of hq and here in this case i'm creating username in name of santa cruz so here in this case R1, I will be creating username in the name of R3. Here in R3, I will be creating the name of R1. It's very easy. So let's go and do the configuration. R1, let's do the configuration here. And R3, let's go and do the configuration here in case of R3. Now the now you can ping. So go back and check show IP interface brief. So I can ping 172.16.3.2. You can see the it's hundred percent. So there is a success. So they can ping with each other. So if I type show interface serial zero zero one. Can see the LCD is open and encapsulated TPP. This is chat, so it will give you full information about this. Okay, PAP and chat. So, this all information is given here in this case. Now, this is a now this is a node host names are involved unless the PPP chat host name command is used now. Pass passwords are case sensitive, so both the cases we have to give. Now, this is an optional message. So this is an optional message. Message. If you want to involve this, you can still involve this by telling that what is the host name. Otherwise, it checks automatically. This depends on router, but this is not mandatory. Otherwise, when you write in the authentication chat, they will automatically send the authentication to user. So basically, this is how chat works. So hash value is sent, and this MD5 hash will check that whether this password is common or not. So first, there is a challenge process. After the challenge process, it will use MD5 encryption using hash table. The hash value is sent across, and finally, if it is a success, it is a success. And is a failure okay it will consider to be a failure so this is my pvp multi-link multi-link also you can do we have to just tell this multi-link and this is how the multi-link is there by creating a virtual template so you can have multiple connections in multi-link so we can do a multi-link in case of isdn bri basic red interface so we have to first uh, declare encapsulation then you have to tell the compression techniques. So there are predict predictor statistics, MPPC. These are different uh, compression techniques, which is not scope of our discussion mode. But first, there is a configuration, there is a compression. So these are the different types of compression: predictor, stacker, MPPC. Okay. So there is a TCP header compression. So the TCP header compression you have to mention, which is used by NCP. 
which even if you go and uh, go, go, go to that particular serial interface and say that this is IPTCP completion header, so, uh, header completion. So, you have to tell that there is a header completion. So, then you have to tell the quality of the percentage in that link quality monitoring in NQM, which is available in PPP for doing it. You can also still do load balancing by actually mentioning the load balancing in that case. Uh, so, once you debug the PPP negotiation, you can see that how that authentication is taking place. So, that's all about PPP. Thank you.